So our next topic today, we'll cover collecting data in ArcPad, where we'll focus on the creation and collection of new data and features using a variety of methods. One of the advantages of ArcPad is its ability to create data from scratch in the field should the need arise. Now, if we're starting from scratch, we first need to create the layers that the features we plan to correct, collect will get saved to. Now, we can do this through the use of quick projects. The quick project uses templates to generate various layers for the data collection. Now, if we're using the default template, ArcPad will generate three generic shape files, point.shape, polygon.shape, and line.shape. Now, in previous versions, this was the only option available to users. But new with 10, we can now specify to use custom templates that are pre-built and pre-configured by you, the user. Now, by using custom templates, we can standardize layers and attributes across various projects with multiple field crews. So we've created our layers, but now we need to get data into them by using a variety of external inputs. And by far, the most common of these input devices is GPS and GPS antennas. Now, ArcPad generates points and vertices for what's called an autonomous fix, which is using signals for four or more satellites or via real-time differential GPS, or RDGPS. RDGPS uses the same satellites as an autonomous fix, but with an added signal that includes correction information for more accurate positions. A good example of RDGPS is when we enable WAS on our mobile units. Now, Trimble offers two products that work with ArcPad and ArcGIS Desktop to increase the accuracy of our collected data. GPS Correct is an extension that runs on top of ArcPad and writes satellite position information to a small file that is saved on the mobile device. GPS Analyst is an extension for ArcGIS Desktop that will post-process or apply the corrections to the data after it's been collected using those files generated by GPS Correct. ArcPad also supports real-time kinematic, or RTK, input. RTK is another form of correction where the satellite signals themselves are manipulated to generate a more accurate position. In addition to GPS, we can use a laser rangefinder to collect points when a GPS fix, fix is not possible, such as under a tree cover, or close to buildings, or when the feature we are trying to collect is unreachable for some reason. So for example, if we're out collecting water data or water utility data, and we're looking to collect location information on a particular valve, but that valve is inside a gated fenced area. Well, since we can't walk up to that valve and set an antenna on top of it and create a position, we can use the range finder to shoot a laser at the target, the laser generates a distance. There's some internal calibration to know the angle and the bearing of where we're focusing. And then ArcPad generates an offset point representing that valve. We can also use cameras to collect data. We heard Ch Chad talk a little earlier about creating a photo layer in ArcPad, more a picture that is taken is represented by a point on the map. But we can also associate a picture with a particular feature through the use of hyperlinks. Now sometimes the camera, such as the one pictured here in the graphic, has GPS capabilities embedded into it. So when a picture is taken, spatial information is written into the header of the file of the picture. This information is read by ArcPad and when it adds the picture, it will add the picture at the location specified by the header.
Now, a variety of other external sensors can be connected to ArcPad through the use of auxiliary communication ports. We can write scripts to interpret signals from a variety of devices, such as barcode readers, if we want to input that information as attributes in the table. I've seen cases where someone attached a Geiger counter to ArcPad to associate an XY location with a radiation reading. Now, by taking several readings, they were able to map out radiation levels over a large given area. Now, new with 10 is the Quick Capture Toolbar. This new addition to ArcPad makes the data collection process much more efficient, showing all the currently editable layers in the map along with their respective symbology on one toolbar. Prior to 10, in order to start adding data to your map, you'd first need to either open the table of contents or drop down menu on the edit toolbar to make a layer editable. Then you would tap on another drop down menu to choose the correct tool to use to collect the feature. Now once the feature is collected, if there was any symbology based on an attribute, it would need to be updated in the edit form to make sure that the correct symbology is applied to that feature. The whole process would need to be repeated if a feature on a new layer needs to be collected. So now with the Quick Capture Toolbar, everything is done behind the scenes, and new features can be added with just one click. By choosing the symbol on the toolbar for the features that you want to collect, the corresponding layer is made editable, the correct tool is chosen, and the correct symbology is applied. And all you need to do to collect features on subsequent layers is just check the next symbol and everything is done for you. The toolbar is also aware of any related tables that might be present in the data, so there's no need to switch back to classic editing for these types of features. Now I'll hand it over to Chad again for our next software demonstration. Okay, thanks, Todd. So in this uh, particular demonstration, we'll take a look at collecting data in ArcPad with a variety of different tools, with GPS, with range finders. Uh, we'll look at also related table uh, records. And so in this scenario, I'm again a city worker. Uh, this time I'm tasked with pole inspections. In this case, uh, many of the poles have already been mapped in, and I may just be visiting them and attaching related table records for inspections or for uh, light information. But as I go along, I'll record the location of new poles that maybe were added. Um, I'll also uh, be checking out um, additional feature types such as signs as I go as well. So the first thing I'll do is just connect to my GPS receiver. In this particular case, I'm going to be using fake GPS, which just uses a, a text file for a GPS feed. But as we mentioned, uh, ArcPad supports um, receiver protocols, and so it can connect to just about any type of GPS receiver. Okay, so as I'm going along, I come across a pole that's not in my map, and I want to GPS that. First, though, I'm, I'm going to take a quick look at my GPS preferences, because I'd like to set up averaging so that I get a little bit better accuracy on point features. Okay, so I've done that. I'll go straight to the Quick Capture toolbar. And to start collecting uh, a new pole location, I'll just uh, tap on the pole icon. So ArcPad starts collecting GPS right away. I can see that it's averaging positions. And I can enter my information about it here. I'm not sure what the install date is because it doesn't have that information on the pole. This is a wood pole. It does have a tag on it that says it's made by Acme. I'm going to check this green arrow down at the bottom. And some of you who have used past versions of ArcPad will wonder what that is. That's the repeat attributes uh, command in ArcPad, which is presented contextually instead of off in a menu somewhere. Okay, so that's good for that poll. I come across a different feature type, a sign, and I want to record that as well. So I'll just press the sign icon and collect the information on this sign. So this happens to be a traffic sign, and it's in good condition. And I'll OK that. 
and then I come across another poll, I'll just press the poll button. So you can see, as, as Todd said, uh, collecting data in different feature layers is uh, very easy with the Quick Capture toolbar. So you see that it's copied the information forward from my last poll. I'll change the poll ID. And for this particular poll, I notice that there are a couple of lights on it. So I'm going to go over to the lights page. This is the related table information, which comes from a relationship class that was set up back in the geodatabase. So I'm going to add a record for a new light and enter that information here. So I'll put in a light ID, light type, globe type, and again, I'm not sure about the uh, install date, so I'll leave that one alone. And the repeat attributes is also turned on here. I'll return to the poll feature, and that stores my first related table record for lights. Let me add another light record for the second one. Let's copy the information forward. And notice when I try to store this record, it tells me that I can't insert a duplicate value for my light ID. So I have to pick a different light ID. Okay, so we'll return to the poll. Good, so we've got two related table records for lights. Let's also enter a related table record for poll inspections. So I'll add a, a record here. And in, I'm inspecting it today. I'll put in my inspector ID. And for the condition, we'll say that uh, the condition needs maintenance. This particular poll uh, needs paint. And I'll store that inspection record. And so lastly, I can go to the picture page. And if I've taken a picture of that poll, if I have a device with an attached camera, I can simply press the camera button and snap the picture. Or if I have uh, a camera that sends pictures over to the device, such as the TrimPix software from Trimble, uh, and other cameras that do Wi-Fi or Bluetooth transfer, I can just browse to the picture after it's finished transferring. And so I'll pick the poll needs paint. And so there we go. I've got a hyperlinked photo now as well. So when I tap OK, I've stored the features, uh, location, the attributes, related table records, and a hyperlink photo. Okay, so that's good. So now I'm coming along and I, I come across another uh, poll that needs to be mapped, but it's off in somebody's backyard and I can't get to it. Um, it's surrounded by some trees, so I'd like to use a rangefinder to record the location of this one. So what I'll do is come and activate my rangefinder. Let's see, I need to set up some preferences really fast here. Okay, and when I activate my rangefinder, what it's doing is connecting via Bluetooth to my rangefinder, which happens to be a LaserTech uh, True Pulse 360. Uh, but as Todd mentioned, or as we mentioned, um, uh, RPES supports protocols here too, rather than specific brands. So there's a number of different uh, models and brands that end up being supported. I'll go over to the edit uh, toolbar and turn on offset point and simply fire a measurement with my laser. So ArcPad receives that record. It records the reference point, which is my current GPS location. And it records or it presents to me here the measurement information from the laser. So I can verify that that looks good. And when I tap OK, it constructs the feature from GPS and the, and the laser offset. And then I simply enter in the information about this poll as I did for past ones. So you can see that with the range finder, um, I can easily collect features that I couldn't otherwise get to. Or just in the interest of saving time, I could collect a bunch of features rather quickly. And if I'm post-processing, that uh, feature is post-processable as well because it has a GPS reference point. Okay, good. So that's a, a variety of ways to collect data here in ArcPad um, with GPS, related table records, and a rangefinder. But let's say that I get a call from my GIS manager and uh, they'd like me to go collect some data on some park features in a nearby park. Well, my current map doesn't have any data for collecting park features. So what I can do is use the Quick Project to be able to do this. So I'm going to switch back to the desktop. 
park pad here and create a new quick project. Now, as Todd mentioned, I have the option to just use the default, which is point, line, and polygon. And if I do that, I can keep the layers from my current map, and it will add a generic point, line, and polygon to that list of, of, of data to work with. Notice, too, that it, it uh, uh, remembers the projection from the current map and carries that forward. But when I look at this uh, template dropdown, I notice that there is a park mapping template. There are a few predefined templates that come with ArcPad. This park mapping template happens to be one that I created, and I'll show you a little bit later how that was done. So let me select that one, and that creates a new quick project with some data for collecting park information. I could start using GPS right away, and that would connect to my receiver. I'm going to not do that since I'm using the desktop ArcPad. And what that's done is created for me uh, a bunch of features that I collect data into. So I've got some park furniture here. I've got some hiking trails. I've got some park boundaries. And all of that's available for me to start, uh, start editing with. So that quick capture toolbar now will come in handy as well, uh, along with that, that quick project template. Now that, that template, what is that? Well, if we take a look at the templates folder, uh, all that really is is a zip file that contains some data, some AXF data, which was created with the ArcPad data manager, and an ArcPad map file called template.apm. So you as the GIS manager could potentially use the ArcPad data manager to check data out and create a package of data that could be used as a template for quick projects. Um, that could be zipped up and placed in a templates folder on mobile devices. And then field crews could simply use that to create a new quick project uh, each time that they collect data. So it is possible to do workflows other than checking data out for each field collector each day or each week, as, as most people probably do. So that's uh, kind of a summary of what I wanted to cover in this particular demonstration. We saw how to use a variety of tools to create data in ArcPad. And the next one, we'll take a look at some further editing abilities with existing data. So I'll turn it back to Todd now. Thank you, Chad.